The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, all of my ummah will be forgiven. They will be shown mercy. Please, very important hadith. Make sure you take this home. All of my ummah will be forgiven and it will be shown mercy. Except. Except the ones that did their haram openly, publicly. For these people, irrespective of whether it was a major or a minor sin, irrespective, they did their haram openly in front of people with no shame. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for them there is no rahmah. And then he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the authentic hadith, he continues on to give an example. He said, he is like the one who did his haram in the cover of night. And Allah provided a blanket over the haram that he did. Yani Allah covered it for him. Then in the morning, he wakes up and he tears up the blanket that Allah put over his sin. And he starts to tell the people, Wallah, I did this and I did this and I did this. For this person, there is no rahmah. And we need to understand, my brothers, again, we've established, we all do wrong. We all make mistakes. We, we know this. But the person that does his sin openly, publicly, with no shame, he tears up the cover that Allah provided for him. The Prophet is saying, for this person, there is no rahmah for him on the Day of Judgment. Do whatever you can to minimize the exposure of other people seeing you. And this is called having adab with Allah. This is having adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For instance, the sister that doesn't wear hijab. The sister that doesn't wear hijab. Wallah, tonight I'm not here to pick on anyone's sins. Her not wearing hijab, or the one that wears hijab, and now, mashallah, has become the common trend. Yeah? Skins. Have you, have, you, have you seen this amazing trend? So now sisters wear skins, like full tights, full. They're actually called skins, so that there's no confusion. They're actually called skins, right? Full figure. You can see her whole body, but she has the hijab on. Right? So, whether it's this, this sister that's dressed like this while like she's working out in her gym or she's working out in the garage, no one can see her. She's not falling in sin. But as soon as she steps out into the public spectrum and now other male eyes and other people, it's not even male eyes, even showing herself to other women in such a manner and allowing this culture, you see this 10 years ago would have never ever happened in our streets. You have to understand how does shaitan work? How are things introduced into communities? How? 10 years ago, 20, this would have never happened in our streets. It took one person, two, Wallah brother, what do you want me to do? There isn't enough da'wah to back and then you can, now it's become the norm. But it's not norm. It's still haram. Even if every person on earth was to start doing it and everyone was to show you that, Wallah brother, there's nothing wrong with it. Everyone does it. Haram is haram and nothing can change that until the day. Nothing can change that. And we like to find comfort in fight. We, we like to come find comfort in putting ourselves with people that have similar habits and similar qualities and similar, right? So that therefore I don't feel like I'm out of place. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that on the day of judgment, they will be shown no mercy. This is the Prophet of Rahmah. This whole deen is based on Rahmah. Every chapter in the Quran with the exception of Surah At-Tawbah starts with what? Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most forgiving. This whole deen is based on Rahmah because the human being sins and Allah knows this. But when it came to people openly doing their sins with no shame, 
because this is arrogance now yeah brother i know it's wrong and so what and who are you and only god can judge me and brother this attitude with this is what destroys our community this is what destroys a society and brothers now one of the conditions of toba one of the conditions of toba is to do what is to regret the sin that you did that's one of the conditions of toba is to regret the action that you did you find yourself now and i find this many times this is happened in front of me multiple times we sit in a gathering and we actually compete with each other on who had a worse jahiliya Is that all you did? Like, bro, what are you talking about? Wallah, you don't understand. Do you remember when we did this? And do you remember? But it's lost in the Wallah, Wallah, Wallah. It's just the boys who are hanging out. We're having a laugh. And we're speaking about the old days. This is haram, my brothers. And this breaks the condition of Tawbah. You should be finding no pride. You should be finding absolutely nothing to be proud about when it comes to the Muharramat. So boys sitting down, having a laugh, having a giggle of who was, you know, who did more haram than the other and, you know, who can outdo the other person with his stupidity. This is indeed. We're supposed to be ashamed of our past. We're supposed to be embarrassed. This is not something that we're supposed to be boasting, in, you know, in front of one another. And the brother is that, but, and, this is how shaitan gets in there. Look, brother, this is a chance for me to boast. But alhamdulillah, this was in the past. So I'm not saying, no, brother, this is all wrong. We're supposed to be protecting our society. We're supposed to be protecting the community. We don't encourage haram in any way, shape or form. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the person, that the person that advocates good, the person that spreads good, then whatever good comes from that goodness, he gets a portion of it. And if I was to share a hadith, if I was to give some da'wah, and that person was to implement this hadith, or it was to implement, right? And he did good in his life, then I would get, I would get the same reward as that person did. If I taught someone how to pray, or, or I encouraged someone to pray, then any, every time that person prays after that, I get the reward for that salah. But the opposite is true too. If I encourage haram, if I encourage sin and people start doing this sin, then I get the same sin as well. My brothers and sisters, you, Allah, Allah, yes, well, yani, I really don't know how to say this. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. We're not a joke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold every single one of us accountable. What you share on your phone, what you share on WhatsApp, what you share on Facebook, you may, well, life for you, it's simply forward. But you're going to be held responsible for every single thing you share. Everything you look at, we're going to be held responsible for it. It's one thing that I looked at haram. Wallah. But if I shared this haram, if I shared this, this fahsha and this, you know, if I share this and I make this abundant, then I'm going to fall into that sin. Every person that watches it, you get that sin. So we need to take matters very seriously. We need to stop promoting that Wallah brother, you know what? There's no point. Everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is fried. Everyone else is. So therefore it's almost like it's, you know what? It's okay. No brother, it's not okay. And as Muslims, we need to have rahmah and we need to always have good thoughts and we need to have hope in Allah and in our community. Yes, do people do zina? Yeah, we know people do zina in the community. But does that mean everyone does zina? Even speaking in such a tone, speaking in such a language of Wallah, you know what, making the people feel that Wallah, brother, you know what, everyone else is doing as a level. It's incorrect. We have to promote good. We have to protect our society. We have to, even if I myself, and people think about brother, isn't that hypocritical? No, it's not. The scholars give examples that I could be doing one haram. I could be doing one particular haram. And if there's an opportunity to do Al-Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi al Munkar on something else, then I still have to do it even while I'm doing the haram itself. 
It's ajeeb, eh? Like, it's, it's, it goes against the logical concept we have in the area. And, oh, wallah, brother, that, that, you know, that, that's very hypocritical. That the guy's walking around with his girlfriend and he's giving advice to a person to, to pray. Now, actually, this has nothing to do with that. That's a sin. He's definitely going to be questioned about it by Allah. But if there's a possibility, if there's an option for you to promote good, to encourage good, then you still have to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, an atom's weight of good, you're going to see. And an atom's weight of sin, you're going to see it. But every single person is going to see. Exposure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to expose every single person. Prophets were scared, my brothers. Prophets were petrified. Prophets, anbiya, anbiya. They were scared and petrified of that day. Who wants that fdiha? Who wants that fdiha? Who? Brother, wallah, just have your mother walk in on you watching something haram. See how embarrassing it is. It's humiliating. But brothers, imagine when you're in front of Allah. You know, your mother, as embarrassing as that is, she'll probably cover it for you. Because you're her son, you're her daughter. Wallah, she'll... Imagine in front of Allah, my brothers. So what does he say, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in the authentic hadith? He said, the one that, the one that covered the sins of his brother in dunya, Allah will cover their sins on the day of judgment. The one that covered the sins of his brother. The one that covered the sins of her sister. The ones that used to make sutra on the muharramat that people do. Allah will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hide what? He will hide their sins on the day of judgment. Can you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants a society where people cover for each other? Now this does not mean, because sometimes this misconception happens. This does not mean that we don't do al-amr bil ma'roof wa nahi al munkar. Yani when someone does haram, we can say to that person, brother, this is haram, sister, this is haram, right? This does not mean that we don't try and stop that. No, what this is speaking about is, I'm sitting there with my mate, I'm telling him, brother, wallah, you're not gonna believe, you know, fulan, yeah, last night I saw him, he was doing this, that and the other. Having a laugh about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves sutra, my brothers. Allah loves that things are covered. Yeah, we understand people have flaws. Yes, we understand that people make mistakes. But exposing those mistakes, making those mistakes public, laughing about these mistakes, competing about our jihl, competing about this is far worse. And we're going to be held responsible for it. And if you think now that sitting, oh, wallah, brother, what's... Trust me, it's a massive deal on the Day of Judgment. Allah loves sutra. Allah loves that when something, cover it. Rasulullah is saying, Allah throws a blanket. Allah throws a blanket over your sins. And then you expose yourself in the morning. Wallah, brother, you don't understand last night. Ah, 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 wallah, we did this and we did that and we went here and we went there. You're tearing up the blanket that Allah gave you. So we have to be very conscious. Wallah, my brothers. Every single person, he plays a role in protecting, protecting this area, protecting our streets. Don't speak about haram like it's common. Although you know, like you, like you believe, wallah, brother, everyone does it. But still, you have to protect the street. We never speak about haram in a way where, wallah, we take the edge off it. We never speak about haram in a way where, <clears throat> where you know, it's somewhat acceptable. Never. We have to protect. Allah loves sutra. Allah loves that you cover your sins. You cover your mistakes. And if you're worried about yourself, then protect others. Cover the mistakes of others. You know, my brothers, there's a quality and I'm going to wrap up with this, you know. 
There's a quality that Allah and His Prophet love. And unfortunately, it's becoming rarer and rarer to see. And I'll openly admit today, I don't, wallahi, I don't say this proudly. Wallah, I say this with embarrassment. I feel like I don't possess this quality. Allah loves Haya. And Haya is a word. There's actually no English translation for it. There's not a word in the English dictionary. There's not a single word that can translate the word Haya and give it its rights. And that speaks volumes. When a language, whether it's English or any other language, when a language or a culture don't have words for concepts like honesty, honor, loyalty, that speaks volumes about those people and it speaks volumes about that language. And it's a quality, the Prophet says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that hayat, yani to have haya is from Iman. And we live in societies today where actually it's the opposite. When someone is caught, uh, so haya, the word haya, haya is derived from the word hay. Look how amazing this is in Arabic. In English, again, like I said, there's no single word, but there's a collaboration of words. So to have hayat, it means to be modest, bashfulness, humbleness also. Yeah, shyness, but I don't like shyness because sometimes shyness can be interpreted as weakness. And to have hayat doesn't mean you're weak. And sometimes brothers, and that's the, like now, this is the society that we have. Today, when you find a brother who doesn't talk much, well, you know, when I speak to Lebanese parents, I say to them, you know, what do you want for your daughter? Ma baddi wahid masloul ma bihke? La Allah yirda alaik, ma badna rajjal. Ma baddi wahid masloul ma bitla' minnu kilmi ma bi'arif hulu, you know? So we have this for Lebanese brothers. I know, sorry for those that, that don't speak Lebanese. Speaking Lebanese is different to Arabic. Huh? <laughs> but we have this culture now where it's like, we don't want a man who doesn't put himself out there, who's not sort of outspoken, he's loud. We interpret this, this is the Sikh society, we interpret this to be like strength, you know? that I'm not a walkover, I'm not a pushover. That if I have something to say, that therefore I'll say it, you know, that, you know, I'm not gonna be the quiet one in the crowd. But actually Allah and His Prophet, they love the quality of what? The Prophet says it's from Iman, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's from Iman. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was described, when the Sahaba described him, who knows what example they, they gave about his demeanor. He was? Yeah, again, I don't like the word shy because, but yes, he was, but there's one specific example. Does anyone know it? Allahu Akbar. He was like a, the Sahaba described Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They described his demeanor. They said he was like a virgin behind the veil. He was like a, a virgin behind the veil. And like I said, I don't like shyness because people interpret this as weakness. The same men who said he was like a virgin behind the veil, they said when he was on the battlefield, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we used to run behind his back to get a moment to breathe while he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, continued fighting. That's the strength he showed on the battlefield. But off the battlefield, they said he was like a virgin behind the veil. Of all of the companions, my ma of all of the companions, who was the master of Hayat? Which companion shines? Uthman radiallahu ta'ala. 
Again, this is from Iman. To be humble, to be subtle, to this doesn't mean you're weak. This doesn't mean you don't say what you need to say and that you don't speak the truth when you need to. No, but his demeanor. And look at the society that we live in today. It's the exact opposite. Allah wants sutra. Allah wants you to cover. My brothers and my, you know, especially my sisters, if, if, and I'm going to explain, if the men were like this, what were their women? Again, I'm not here to say halal haram because brother, I don't want to get knocked outside on Holden Street. Wallah, the sisters will jump and start shanking me in the neck. Today, she wants to take the stage. She wants to take the platform. She wants to speak on her husband's behalf. Wallahi, most marriages, when I come to, you know, sort of try and mediate, yeah? You go to the brother's father or you go to the sister's father. Brother, he says to me in front, he goes, well, brother, I don't have a say, you need to talk to her mother. In front of, like, no, brother, I'm akis alayhi, brother, I don't have a say. I don't have a say, you need to talk to the mother. She runs the show here. Yeah, and, 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 and she'll happily tell you too. And me, I'm here. You need to talk to me, brother. La ilaha illallah. You know? So we now, and, and we, we, like we see this as strength. That Allah, brother, Allahumma barik, you know that. Look, look. This is actually the exact opposite. So we said Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he shined in this. Once Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, She said, I was sitting with my husband, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was sitting in a manner where a portion of his leg was exposed. I'm not sure exactly. So I'm not saying his aura was showing. I'm not sure. But she said a portion of his leg was showing. He was sitting, it was only him and his wife, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she said, the door knocked. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says to the Prophet of Allah, she says to my Prophet of Allah, this was strange. When my father walked in, you remained as you were. When Umar walked in, you remained as you were. Why when Uthman walked in, you stood up and you fixed your posture and your clothing? He sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said to her, Aisha, should I not be shy of a man whom even the angels are shy of. And you think today, my brother and my sister, that by you recording for a silly laugh and for things to be shared, you think this makes you what good, makes you famous? Allah loves sutra. There are narrations of Uthman and narrations of Ali bin Abi Talib. I'm not sure of their authenticity, but there are narrations of them that say they never looked at their private parts ever. This is haya, modesty, conduct. Today we walk around naked in the house. Well, brother, I'm in the house. Yeah, but there's angels in that house, brother. Yeah, but brother is a haram. And then everyone tries to, you know, technicality. Wallahi, my brothers, halal and haram, forgive me. I don't know how to say this, you know. How do I say this in being very respectful? Halal and haram without taking anything. That's kindergarten language. That's kindergarten language. For those people that are pursuing a relationship with Allah, they don't talk halal haram. The awliya of Allah, those that are friends with... My brothers, when the Prophet made 100 istighfars a day, what was he making istighfar about, sallallahu alayhi wa Tell me, wasn't he free from sin? Wasn't Rasulullah, wasn't he free from sin? Why was he making istighfar 100 times a day? Why? Because for those people, yes, but for those people that are close to Allah, 
him reading one hour of Quran, he's embarrassed from that. They don't talk halal haram anymore. They talk, what halal can I leave? Out of getting closer to Allah. They have a private and intimate relationship with Allah. So yes, my brother, you have a sin, you make a mistake. Wallah, we've already established, I've said it 10 times. We all make mistakes, Akhi. Wallah, we're not here to crucify anyone. But that arrogance of doing your sin in front of people, you're tarnishing your private relationship with Allah. When you speak about your haram in public and you're having a laugh and a giggle, Allah provided you with a blanket. Allah provided you with sutra and we rip it up. So we need to understand who every one of us here has a private relationship with Allah. I believe it was Uthman never touched his private part with his right hand ever. Halal haram. Brother, wallah, it's not the point anymore. When he was asked why, he said, I shake the Prophet's hand with my right. Allahu Akbar, like where, where, like where are these people's thoughts? Allah loves sutra, Allah loves it. My brothers, like, you know what that means? Allah loves sutra. Do you know what that means? Allah loves that you cover. Does it say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, like, He could have said that Allah loves that you'd never seen. He could have said that. But not actually, what He said, Allah loves sutra. That you cover. That you're embarrassed of your sin. And if you're not embarrassed, then at least act like you're embarrassed. Don't underestimate that. At least act like you're embarrassed. Wallah, this is better for you then. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to preserve ourselves and to preserve this community.